Good morning, everyone. Every day we focus on the recovery of New York City, a recovery for all of us. And that recovery is well underway. You can see the energy, the activity in the city again, the jobs coming back, the livelihoods coming back, the businesses coming back. You can see it all. And there's a reason. It has made the difference. This is the whole ball game, everyone. So what we've seen is the biggest vaccination effort in the history of New York City. And now we've added this $100 incentive, which is proving to be very popular already, just a few days into it. It just started on Friday, and by yesterday, over 11,000 New Yorkers had claimed the $100 incentive with their first vaccination. 11,000 people in just a few days. This is going to be a big deal, and this is going to help us go a lot farther. As of today, in here? New York City, 10 million. 15,459 total doses from the beginning of our effort. But here's another major milestone we have now reached. Five million, five million New Yorkers have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine. Five million New Yorkers. We're now at this point we dreamed of, and now we're gonna go farther. We're gonna go farther with a smart mix of incentives and mandates because it's all about vaccination. I've been saying now over the last few weeks, we're gonna climb the ladder. We're gonna use every tool we've got to fight the Delta variant and to end the COVID era once and for all in this city. That means more and more vaccinations. And we know that strong, clear mandates help. So we started, of course, with a mandate for our frontline health workers, health and hospitals, Department of Health, requiring that they get tested or vaccinated, obviously with a strong, strong preference for vaccination. Then we said new employees will be required to get vaccinated before they could start work for the city of New York. These kind of actions are making an impact far beyond the boundaries of New York City. We're seeing our state and other states like California following suit. We're seeing the federal government following suit. New York City's starting every time the action. We're setting the pace, and we're going to do that again today with today's announcement. But let me also talk about the private sector. We've seen leaders in the private sector blaze the trail here. I want to thank a great New York City entrepreneur, Danny Meyer, for the announcement he made regarding his restaurants. I want to thank Equinox and SoulCycle for the decision they made about vaccine mandates. I want to thank everyone in the Broadway community for the decision they made related to indoor performances. So examples right there, dining, fitness, performances, where you see leaders in the private sector already saying clearly, vaccination's the answer, we need these strong, clear mandates. And we've proven that even with outdoor entertainment, it makes sense. Our homecoming concerts are gonna be amazing, but if you wanna to go to one of them, you have to be vaccinated. That's a requirement. Climbing this ladder is giving us more and more ability to fight back the Delta variant. By fighting the Delta variant, we will continue our recovery and we will ultimately beat COVID. So today I announce a new approach, which we're calling the Key to NYC Pass. The Key to New York City. When you hear those words, I want you to imagine the notion that because someone's vaccinated, they can do all the amazing things that are available in this city. This is a miraculous place, full, literally full of wonders. And if you're vaccinated, all that's gonna open up to you. You'll have the key, you can open the door. But if you're unvaccinated, unfortunately, you will not be able to participate in many things. That's the point we're trying to get across. It's time for people to see vaccination as literally necessary to living a good and full and healthy life. The key to NYC pass will be a first in the nation approach. It will require vaccination for workers and customers in indoor dining, in indoor fitness facilities, indoor entertainment facilities. This is going to be a requirement. The only way to patronize these establishments indoors will be if you're vaccinated, at least one dose. The same for folks in terms of work. They'll need at least one dose. This is crucial because we know that this will encourage a lot more vaccination. We've seen it already. We've seen the impact of the mandate we've been put in place for city workers already starting to move people to vaccination. We've obviously seen the positive impact of incentive as well. The goal here is to convince everyone 
that this is the time. If we're going to stop the Delta variant, the time is now. And that means getting vaccinated right now. This new policy will be phased in over the coming weeks. So we've been working with the business community, getting input. We're going to do more over the next few weeks. The final details of the policy will be announced and implemented in the week of August 16th. So over the next couple of weeks, getting more feedback, finalizing the policy, publishing it, and beginning to implement it. We'll then spend most of a month educating people, going out to businesses, receiving calls from businesses, answering questions and concerns, making sure everyone understands the new approach. And then on September 13th, during that week, we'll begin inspections and enforcement. So we want to give businesses, big and small, a chance to get acclimated. We want to make adjustments based on their input. But this will move forward starting in the week of August 16th. And then full enforcement and inspection begins the week of September 13th, which is very pertinent because that's the first full week after Labor Day when we really expect a lot more activity in this city. Now, I'll tell you, we know those conversations with the business community are crucial. We've had a lot of them already. What we're hearing from so many folks in the business community is they understand it's time, but they need government to lead. That's going to help them to do what they need to do. Not everyone's going to agree with this. I understand that. But for so many people, this is going to be the life-saving act that we're putting a mandate in place. It's going to guarantee a much higher level of vaccination in this city. And that is the key to protecting people and the key to our recovery. That's why it's the key to NYC. The key to NYC pass opens a lot of doors, and we need it. We'll be issuing a mayoral executive order and a health commissioner's order. Those are the legal tools necessary to implement this approach. And we know that this is what's going to turn the tide. And we also know that people are going to get a really clear message. If you want to participate in our society fully, you've got to get vaccinated. You've got to get vaccinated. It's time. All the answers, all the information's out there. You've seen over 160 million Americans get vaccinated safely. You've seen it make the difference. The only reason we're having the recovery is vaccination. So it's time. And this is going to send that message clearly. And the key to NYC pass, this is an easy approach because to confirm vaccination, all you need is your vaccination card or the NYC COVID Safe app or the Excelsior app from the state. Any of those will do. So it's simple. Just show it and you're in. Everyone this summer already has been amazing in the city and a lot more to come. This approach is going to make clear. You want to enjoy everything great in this summer of New York City? Go get vaccinated. It will do for you so many things. It will make your life better. It will make all our lives better. I want you to hear from folks who have been working so hard on the response to COVID and who care so deeply. I want you to hear what they think of this new, clear, strong approach, the key to NYC pass. First of all, the former acting administrator for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. He was also a former senior advisor to the Biden White House COVID response team. He is a powerful voice for expanding access to health care in this country. And I really want to thank him for joining us. My pleasure to introduce Andy Slavitt. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me join us, Mayor, and thank you for your leadership. Let me spend two minutes um, emphasizing a couple of points. Uh, first of all, the Delta vaccine, the Delta variant, is a very different kind of COVID than what people may remember and have experienced from 2020. Only if you're not vaccinated, only five minutes of exposure can infect you. And this is something that in a city like New York uh, could cause a widespread outbreaks if not for leadership and action. Second is that if you're vaccinated, you, you are in a much better position. Vaccinations have been saving hundreds of thousands of lives. Um, they are what will stand between um, this being another bad year and a potentially uh, a year when people get their lives back. But let me take the, the question that the mayor has laid out head on. There are three groups of people that we have to be concerned with, and I think the mayor 
is showing great respect for all three. The first are vaccinated people, people who have protected themselves and have acted to reduce the spread. These folks will have the ability to lead the kind of life that they led prior to 2020 and really make the most of reuniting with their families, with their friends, and activities around New York. Second are people who have chosen not to be vaccinated for one reason or another. And third are people who can't be vaccinated or can't be immunized, either because they're 12, year, 12 years old or younger, because of their age, um, or possibly because of their uh, health status. Uh, they may have a compromised immune system from HIV, cancer, or something else. And what the mayor is announcing today is that while all three of these groups are obviously important, it is this third group, these people that can't be vaccinated, that must take a priority and that must be protected uh, from the city. Um, and um, it is putting those people and their needs higher than people who have choices that are not taking them that's so essential. Um, the questions that people have now um, about society will be cleared up with this announcement. Can I go into this restaurant? Can I go into this gym safely? Can I go to this doctor? Should I go to this hospital? Should I go to this movie? Um, the, New York City will be the first city in the country that takes those questions off the table completely as this gets implemented. And I think that level of assurance um, should encourage people that this is not a choice pitting one against the other, but it's a choice that benefits everybody. And I think this should be viewed positively as encouragement for the many, many people who've not been vaccinated, not because they have a real objection to it, but because they haven't seen or felt a compelling need. And our data shows us that a lot of people, particularly people under 25, who have not been vaccinated, um, really don't hold a strong objection. They just don't feel that it's such a high priority in their lives. So I want to thank the mayor for his leadership today. I expect that over time, this will be uh, copied around the country. It is a great way to strike a blow against the real enemy, and that enemy is not one another. That enemy is a virus that seeks to incapacitate or kill many of our fellow citizens, and by stepping up this way, we're protecting them. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you for allowing me to be on this morning. Thank you so much, Andy. Uh, I really love what you just said there. Enemy is certainly not each other. Uh, we have uh, an enemy that's going after all of us and we gotta do something different if we're going to make an impact. And I really appreciate your point too. This, this will clarify things and it will just help us at a crucial sensitive moment. So thank you for joining us and most especially thank you for the extraordinary role you've played over recent years in doing so much to make sure Americans had access to healthcare. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Now another voice I want you to hear uh, she has been uh, one of the most prominent national voices uh, about the fight against COVID, the way to go about it the right way. She advised uh, the Biden transition, and she has been a voice for really thinking about what we always need to do ahead, getting over the horizon to the next thing we have to do to fight COVID. My pleasure to introduce she is a clinical assistant professor of medicine and infectious diseases at NYU's Grossman School of Medicine, Dr. Celine Gounder. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you everybody for being here today. Uh, as Andy said, the Delta variant is different. It is at least twice as infectious or contagious as early strains of the virus. And that means that one infected person today can go on to infect twice as many people as they would have early in the pandemic. Why? Well, because people with the Delta variant have a thousand times as high the level of the virus in their nose and throat as they would have had with earlier strains of the virus. More virus means more contagious and also more severe disease. We're now seeing children and young people getting very sick with the Delta variant. And although it wasn't common for kids to transmit COVID to others last year, with the Delta variant, that's a completely different story. It looks like kids can in fact transmit and that they can get very sick. One way out of this is vaccination. No, COVID is not the flu, 
But vaccines are how we turn COVID into something like the flu. Vaccines are how we reopen businesses and offices. Vaccines are how we get back to work. Vaccines are how we get back to school. And vaccines are how we learn to live with COVID. So I, I'm very much in support of the mayor's new policies, anything to encourage people to get vaccinated and get back to life as New Yorkers. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. And as always, thank you for breaking it down and making it clear to people we, we have a real different threat here and it means using new measures like this to fight back. Thank you very, very much for joining us today. Everyone, I want you to hear from some other leaders who care deeply about this. And one of them was yesterday at City Hall and we were talking and he said, you know, it's really time to do something different. And I said, great minds think alike. And I want you to hear from a leader of this city uh, representing Manhattan and the Bronx, but also a leader nationally in the Congress and has been a strong, equity, uh, strong advocate, I should say, for health care equity. My pleasure to introduce Congress member Adriano Espaillat. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to the business leaders, uh, the medical community, and uh, advocates uh, for this effort. Uh, clearly, we need to do better, and uh, the way to do better is uh, this route. I think that it is very simple. I carry my wallet with me, and I just pull out my card right there. And it's as simple as that. And, you know, restaurants and other places have been uh, utilizing uh, a They've been testing folks for their temperature. They've been proving young people for their 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 age uh, before they consume alcohol. Uh, so this is happening already. Um, this is not new, uh, and but this one will save lives. Uh, tremendously important. Uh, we don't want this uh, Delta variant being a runaway train that uh, impacts. Uh, so negatively our city and our country maybe put us in danger of being forced with a future decision of another shutdown we don't want to go back there we want to make sure we we, we address it now we save lives now this is a smart way to do it this is a a, a practical way to do it um, i think people um will be encouraged to to get vaccinated and, and we'll be able to, to move forward as a city and a country. So, Mayor, this is uh, smart, uh, practical, as I said, and I think it will save lives. Um, the only thing, other thing that I would add, Mayor, is that perhaps we could work with the business community to assist them in some way so they can comply, right? They can comply and they could uh, do it the right way. Uh, I'm having a couple of functions this weekend, and I'm requiring um, document screening of the vaccination car and mask use on two of my events that I'm having this weekend. If you don't wear a mask and if you don't come in with your car or with a, a notice, a 72 hour notice that you are negative, uh, 72 hour test, uh, negative test notice, then you won't be able to participate. We, you can't put other people's lives in danger because you refuse to vaccinate. That's not fair to New York City. So thank you so much, uh, Mayor, for your leadership. Gracias al alcalde for, por su liderazgo. Esta es una medida práctica y sana que va a, a salvar vidas. Y simplemente presentando la tarjeta de vacunación, como esta que yo porto conmigo en mi cartera, es suficiente. O una notificación negativa de una prueba, eh, al igual que el uso de la mascarilla, que son importantes, nosotros creemos que va a salvar vida y que va a prevenir que en el futuro tengamos que tener una decisión difícil de un cierre de nuevo. No queremos llegar ahí. Eso es lo que estamos evitando. We are trying to avoid going to a situation in the future where we're going to have to contemplate another potential shutdown. So, this is very smart. Thank you so much, Mayor, and, and the leadership that's in this call. Thank you so much, Congress Member. And I loved your demonstration yesterday when we were at City Hall, just pulling out the car to your wallet. You had it ready at all times. And I think that's such a powerful message. It, it doesn't take much to meet this requirement and keep everyone safe. Thank you for your support for this initiative. And we're definitely going to work with you and, and leaders all over the city 
to get our businesses ready for it so we can do it right. Thank you very, very much. Now, everyone, thank you. Thank you. Now, everyone, another uh, really leading voice in this city on the fight against COVID and someone who believes in uh, taking this kind of measure because it's time to fight back hard and focus on vaccination even more. He's been a great voice for making sure that the people of this city get what they need to protect them from COVID. My pleasure to introduce the chair of the health committee and the city council, council member, Mark Levine. Mayor de Blasio, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this important announcement. And thank you more importantly for leading boldly now as we face the threat of Delta that make no mistake, is coming at us like a freight train. And it is really important that we're acting today to put New York City at the forefront globally in fighting back. This measure is needed. It's needed now because cases are rising rapidly, doubling in the last 10 or 11 days, because hospitalizations have already more than doubled in this wave. We have to act to protect this city. And we've learned over the past year and a half that our choice is to act now or face more difficult options down the road. We have to act fast. And we're doing it now. New York City is doing it in, in a bold way to deal with the fact that indoor spaces are venues in which the Delta variant is spreading. And that's especially true in a city where, despite our enormous progress in vaccination, with over four and a half million people vaccinated, still about 45% of residents of New York City are not yet fully vaccinated. And that is enough for this virus to spread. And so this measure will make indoor settings where people are likely to take their masks off. They're likely to be close together, socializing, speaking, where ventilation may not be good. In short, all the conditions that the Delta virus wants to spread. This initiative will make those places safer, but it will also have an important secondary benefit, which is it will jumpstart vaccination in New York City, something that we desperately need. We desperately have to pick up the pace of vaccination. We don't have another year to vaccinate the rest of the city. We have to move much more quickly. And I really am optimistic that this will be uh, just the nudge that folks who are on the, vent on the fence will need to finally do the right thing to protect themselves, their families, their communities, and get the vaccine. And actually, that's not hypothetical because we're seeing it in places around the world that have instituted similar policies, most famously in France, uh, where, where vaccination spiked within days of a similar announcement. We need that kind of jump here. And I, I'm confident that this will bring about an increase in vaccination at a moment when we desperately need it. Uh, this is not an easy policy. It's not a policy without controversy, but that has defined every difficult decision we've had to make in this crisis. And leadership is about, is about acting decisively, quickly to save lives. And so, Mayor, I want to commend you for doing exactly that with this announcement. Uh, and I know that it's going to be um, a difficult few weeks to implement it, to communicate it, to build support. Uh, and you can count on me as an ally in that fight. Thank you again for having me and for making this important policy change. Thank you very, very much, Council Member. You, you always tell the truth, not without controversy. That is correct, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is the right thing to do and your support uh, will be tremendously helpful as we make this happen here in the city. And I think it's also gonna be uh, a model that will be picked up on a lot of other places as we prove that it can work right here. So thank you so much, Council Member. And now I want to hear a perspective. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Someone who has been a leader uh, in the areas of small business and economic development, who understands how crucial it is to bring back this city, also represents communities hit hard by COVID and understands how important it is to maximize vaccination at this moment. My pleasure to represent from Queens, State Senator James Sanders, Jr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I trust you, you can hear me, sir. Yes, we can indeed, Senator. And we have a beautiful picture of you up on the screen, too. Well, the picture, I've never looked better. I will say <laughs> that, sir, it is true that I represent the Southeast Queens, the area that did the second highest amount of dying at one point 
in the entire nation. And uh, to all of the skeptics who say that this does not exist, I can introduce you to the people who were responsible for loading the bodies out. We are dealing with a, a life threatening crisis of no small magnitude. I also find myself in a strange place of we have the highest rate of uh, non-vaccinated people in New York City. There's a madness afoot here, sir. Uh, and only government can make a difference here. Uh, if we do not take a strong stand and say you, you cannot you you have the right to your body, of course, but you do not have the right to to kill other people here. And we're speaking in, in that sense. Uh, a strong stance needs to be taken. Yes, it will be controversial. But your stance when when we look back in history on this one and this will be a defining moment in in your government, your stance on this uh, COVID-19 has been correct from the very beginning uh, with the right tempo. It had we followed that, we would have saved dozens, hundreds of people, perhaps thousands uh, that we have lost. And history will not be kind to those who took a different position. So I applaud you in this one. Um, I, I, I applaud you and I see you. I believe that I have a letter to you also saying that uh, every public event, we should have a truck vaccination upon demand at. So I absolutely stand with you on behalf of all of the people who are really doing the dying in here. Um, uh, this is not a theoretical conversation for us. You'll, Forgive my passion to all the naysayers, uh, but unless you could come up with a better way to save my neighbors, then uh, then you should not have this a negative conversation here. My neighbors are dying, and the COVID, the next, the Delta, when it hits in October, we are unvaccinated. Give me a better way or support the mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Senator. And as always, you tell it like it is. And we have to be real blunt about the fact that the danger is profound and we need strong, strong measures. So thank you. Thank you for supporting this. And your point about getting more and more of those mobile vaccination sites out, that's exactly what we believe in. And you'll be seeing them at more and more places people congregate because we want people to right then have that moment of inspiration, come get that first shot, and then they're on their way to a lot more safety and a lot more freedom. Thank you, Senator. Now, everyone, I want you to hear from two leaders of the business community and two folks who will be directly affected by this policy and believe in it because they understand the frontline impact that COVID is having on their customers and their employees. First of all, uh, a New York City legend, uh, she and her family have created literally one of the greatest and most famous dining institutions in all the history of New York City. And that's saying a lot. And we are arguably the greatest restaurant city in the world. I would argue with anyone on that any time. I think we are. And to be one of the greatest of the greatest all time, well, that says a lot. I also want to thank her and her family and everyone at the restaurant because they donated food to people in need during the pandemic. They are always there for the community and now taking a lead in helping to make sure more and more New Yorkers get vaccinated. From the legendary Sylvia's Restaurant in Harlem, my great pleasure to introduce Trinesse Woods Black. Hey, Bianca, come get your phone. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> well, I have a little hey, lead Bianca, in here. Run, come get your phone. <laughs> All right, let's see. Hi. Trinesse, are you out there? Let's check. Let's go to the next hold on, we'll go to the next person and come back. Okay, we're going to hold on Trinesse for a moment. There's a good lead up, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, another great business leader, and she has created one of the great. Uh, we all love our events in New York City, and we love the, the food and the, the way the events are put together and <laughs> the specialness. One of the great K-12 
catering businesses in this city, known for its creativity, its quality, its great performances. Uh, a woman who founded great performances and who always gives back to the city, including as founder of the Sylvia Center to improve children's health. She is always there when the city of New York needs her. My pleasure to introduce Liz Newmark. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, it's an honor to be here with you. I wish we could be in person, and that's the goal. Um, all eyes are on you and on New York City, so your leadership and courage at this moment is going to be what makes the difference for us in the hospitality industry um, and just New Yorkers trying to be safe and healthy and go about our lives. You know, COVID decimated our industry. It was like falling off a cliff. Uh, like no recession, no business hardship I have ever faced. And it took the lives of our colleagues, it took the lives of friends, it took jobs, it took livelihoods, it took everything. And we've been crawling back for the last few months. We put a mandate in place in April and uh, required everyone who worked for great performances to start to get the vaccine. And it was a very lonely place. So we are thrilled to have the, the support and the company of other industries and, and, and the city, obviously, in, in doing this. Because without vaccine, there is no recovery. There is no getting back into those great rooms with parties, with strangers, and no ventilation. And um, the timing is now. I believe that we can get ahead of this and make a difference in, in our lives, our recovery, and, uh, and just the enjoyment of being here in New York as a community. So thank you. And um, I'm here for fighting the fight and, uh, and having that party. So thank you. I like that. That's a good combination, Liz, fighting the fight and having the party. That, that kind of that gives you both sides of the equation. Fight the fight now so we can have the party. And that's what the key to NYC pass is all about. And Liz, you've been ahead of the curve. Uh, really want to thank you for helping to get the ball rolling and proving it could work. And yes, we believe when government comes into play, it's going to help so many other businesses to do the same thing you've done successfully. So thank you, as always, for your leadership, Liz. All right, now, let's see. Did, I'm looking for a signal whether Trines is back. That's a yes, we think. I okay, Trines, can you hear me? I sure can hear you. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. How You're, are you? I'm great. I gave you the most beautiful introduction in history. I hope you heard it. I Actually, I did hear it. I have my niece and her six-month-old baby visiting with me. So, you know, technology, work from home, got to make it do what it does. That's right. That's but, right. Mayor, thank you for including me um, in this really important conversation. Trines, we are really happy to hear you, have you here. Tell me from your perspective, again, running one of the most legendary restaurants in New York City, uh, tell me what you think of this new mandate to make sure folks are vaccinated. Well, first and foremost, um, the safety of our staff family and our guests are our main, main um, concern. When you work in the hospitality industry and in the restaurant industry, you know, you're serving and safety is something that we take just as seriously as we do our, rec our recipes. And although some may, you know, shrug their shoulders about this, the real case is that COVID is, is killing us. And we are being hit, especially in Harlem and other black and brown communities, especially hard um, because lots of folks are not getting the vaccination. And I like to use um, a, a family member, very close family member, as an example, who is an 85 year old woman in amazing health. She can walk three miles a day if she needs to. She was orphaned as a young child. Both of her parents died as a result of the Tuskegee experiment. In addition to that, she's had other atrocities that she had to live through. And she knew that she had to be vaccinated. She understood that being vaccinated was the only chance that she had to not be hospitalized or worse. 
Within 24 hours last year, I lost six loved ones. And that was really, really devastating to me. And I could not wait till my opportunity came for me to be able to take the vaccine. And what I will say is, yeah, this is, this is, it's, it's not going to be like a flick of the switch and this is going to be easy, but it's needed. It's needed. We have to know that we are providing a safe environment for our staff family to work in and for our guests to enjoy. We're a family restaurant. We love to see our little kids come in and to know that there's an opportunity at our establishment, you know, for children not to be safe is just not something that we are willing to live with. This virus is real. It's here. Yesterday, um, we observed our 59th anniversary in business at the restaurant, and we had our outdoor annual community breakfast, and we also had a vaccination pop-up there. So folks were able to get their smothered chicken, grits, and biscuits like they're accustomed to, but they could also um, get a vaccine. And that's something that we appreciate, just the ability to be able to assist in making sure that we're doing our part. And and Mayor, I thank you so much for having these types of discussions. Um, you know, I'm on the board of the NYC Hospitality Alliance, where we are leading these conversations. Um, our members are very concerned. Um, they do not want to shut down. Again, Many businesses cannot afford to live through another shutdown. So this this is a good option for us. And I know that if we work together like we like we did when we were in the eye of the COVID-19 storm, that we can get through this. So I just um, I know that folks feel a little way when it's mandated to take the vaccine, but it is a matter of life and death here. And that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to serve our communities. We're trying to keep our our children, our families and friends safely. And to do that is by implementing what, what you're doing. Um, I know it was a hard decision to come to, but it's one that my father and I, um, owner of Sylvia's, we, we're thankful that you're, you're implementing. And we look forward to working with our other business neighbors on ways to make this a smooth transition. Thank you so much, Trinessa. Very, very powerful statement, and and particularly the story you told from your own family, uh, really is Thanks. you know it makes it makes me feel even more strongly this is the right thing to do. And your your leadership counts for a lot here. I really, really want to thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, now everyone, there you've heard it. Uh, a lot of very powerful voices who believe in this approach. We're going right away to get everyone ready for it. It's going to make a big difference. And to understand, once again, the challenge we're up against with the Delta variant, we'll do today's indicators. And again, the reason we are still able to keep this city moving forward is vaccination. But the only way to defeat the Delta variant, because it's coming on strong, is with more vaccination. Here are today's indicators. Number one. Daily number of people admitted to New York City hospitals for suspected COVID-19. Today's report, 75 patients confirmed positivity of 29.87%. Hospitalization rate per 100,000, 0.74. Number two, new reported cases on a seven-day average. Today's report, 1,288 cases. And number three, again, we're going to phase this out in the morning presentations after uh, this week, but it will be available on the Department of Health website. Percentage of people testing citywide positive for COVID-19. Today's report on a seven-day rolling average, 3.09%. Going to say a few words in Spanish about our new policy we're announcing today. Para disfrutar nuestra hermosa ciudad al máximo, debemos estar seguros. Tenemos que detener el covid a finales de este mes, será requisito tener la vacuna para visitar a los espacios interiores como los restaurantes, bares, gimnasios 
y otros lugares. Esta es una acción audaz y necesaria para combatir el COVID. With that, we turn to our colleagues in the media. And please let me know the name and outlet of each journalist. We'll now begin our Q&A. As a reminder, we're joined today by Dr. Choksi, by Dr. Katz, and by Senior Advisor Dr. Jay Varma. The first question today goes to Derek Waller from WABC. Mr. Mayor, good morning. Good morning, Derek. How are you doing? Doing great. I hope you are. Yes, indeed. Well, I just obviously want to ask about the uh, the key to New York City. And one question I had, though, is uh, how are you able to enforce uh, this uh, vaccine mandate when the vaccines have not yet gained FDA approval, full FDA approval? Derek, really fair question, but I'll tell you, we got a, a very clear message from the U.S. Department of Justice uh, that it was appropriate to move forward with these kind of standards uh, based on the existing approval. Uh, that was thorough unto itself, and obviously we've seen with our own eyes well over 160 million Americans successfully vaccinated. So it is uh, legally absolutely appropriate to move forward with this mandate. And it's necessary, uh, given the pace of the Delta variant right now. Go ahead, Derek. And I also wanted to ask, uh, we saw a report from our sister station actually in San Francisco reporting that uh, San Francisco uh, General Hospital is going to start giving uh, booster shots, mRNA booster shots, to people who took the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I know that you took the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Have you heard anything about that? Is that something that you would... Uh, do yourself. Would you take a booster shot? Well, I'll, t- I'll turn in a moment to my fellow Johnson & Johnson vaccine, uh, Dr. Dave Choksi, and obviously if Dr. Katz or Dr. Varma want to add, um, I'm ready to take a booster shot whenever the time is right and whenever the priority is right, because as with everything, uh, if we're introducing any new piece to the equation, we want to make sure that those who need it most get it first. Uh, But if at any point it's determined uh, that booster shots are advisable, I'm certainly ready when my turn comes. With that, Dr. Choksi. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. We are following the science very closely on this, particularly in the context of uh, the Delta variant. At this moment, um, we are not recommending uh, booster shots uh, for uh, any individuals uh, based on our scientific understanding right now. However, there is uh, some evidence, and it is growing, that booster shots may be uh, recommended or required uh, a little bit further down the road. If that happens, it's most likely to be prioritized for people who are immunocompromised, uh, potentially um, older individuals as well. Uh, But this is an area where we need to ensure that um, we uh, follow the science as well as the um, the recommendations from uh, the FDA on it. So this is an area for us to uh, stay tuned. But I want to give the clear message that at this moment, we are not recommending booster shots for anyone, including those who have received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Dr. Varma, anything you want to add? Uh, nothing more to add. Great. Okay. Go ahead. The next is Lisa Rosner from WCBS. Hi, Mayor. How are you? Good, Lisa. How you been? Been great. Thank you for asking. Uh, my first question is, how is this pass going to work uh, if you're not from New York City? Like, you have a lot of people coming here from New Jersey and tourists not from the area. Um, are they going to somehow get this pass, this card? You know, great question, Lisa. Obviously, the uh, vaccination card that so many of us have in our wallets uh, is something you see from all over the country. So that's a very straightforward way for anyone who's been vaccinated to prove it. Uh, we have the, the, the NYC app. We have the Excelsior Pass. There's different options that anyone can use. Uh, the bottom line will be someone will have to have proof. They have to have proof of vaccination if they want to dine indoors or go to indoors entertainment, fitness, etc. cetera. Uh, so long as that proof is accurate and real, wherever it comes from, that's what they'll need to show. Go ahead, Lisa. And uh, do you know what kind of penalties 
uh, businesses might face if they don't enforce this? Like it was very difficult for them to enforce masks. Now you're asking them to deny people business essentially. And uh, is there concern about how this might affect the workforce, like restaurants that are already short staffed? So uh, two important questions. I'm gonna talk about uh, the staffing for a second and then uh, turn to Dr. Choksi on the enforcement. Obviously Department of Health already way before COVID plays an important role in restaurant inspections. Um, but first on the staffing, look, this is to protect everyone in uh, the restaurant community, entertainment community, the employees and the customers alike. What I really believe, Lisa, is that this will inspire people to get vaccinated. This is what we've heard from a lot of business people. They believe that their employees need one more push. And certainly since a lot of folks we're talking about are younger, uh, we know, we know it for a fact, uh, that younger New Yorkers uh, want to live the full life of the city. And an incentive to getting vaccinated would be if you can fully participate. Uh, also, a disincentive would be if you're shut out of a lot of things you want to do. A lot of young people, including who work in restaurants and bars, want to go to restaurants and bars themselves. So I think you're going to see an incentive in reality, plus the, the literal $100 incentive. Um, we believe as this kind of approach grows, and you're seeing it starting to happen now in the private sector and other areas, it's gonna become more and more the norm. We want it to become the norm. I'm taking this action in part to inspire others to follow suit. On the question of the inspections, again, we're gonna take some time to get people ready, and we're not gonna be issuing any fines before September, but it's pretty straightforward. You check someone's vaccination status at the door. I mean, people check in to go to a, a restaurant, a bar, or anything. You check their vaccination status. If they have it, great. If they don't, turn around. Dr. Choksi, you want to speak to that? Uh, thank you, sir. I'll just add briefly, we consider this a, mat a matter of safety and health. Uh, and so that's what our uh, enforcement paradigm will reflect in the same way that um, we take precautions to ensure uh, food safety uh, and other health and hygiene standards. Um, that's what we will be uh, aiming for uh, with respect to uh, enforcement of the key to NYC. Um, this will be not just uh, health department inspectors, but uh, a multi-agency set of inspectors who uh, will be able to enforce those rules. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Go ahead. The next is Juan Manuel from New York One. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Good, Juan Manuel. How you been? Very good. Thank you. So positivity rate is already over 3%, and the uh, Delta variant has taught us that we still don't know a lot of things about the COVID-19 virus. We are still more than a month away from September 13th. So given that infections are quickly going up every day in New York City, why not mandate improve a vaccination sooner or also mandate masks indoors immediately or proof of a negative test? at public venues like Congressman Espaillat and Councilman Levine had, have asked the city to do, and a city like Paris just started doing this week. Juan well, Manuel, we're looking at every option. Everything's on the table. As I said, we've been climbing the ladder. Uh, more and more uh, announcements, more and more new strategies all the time. Everything's on the table. Um, but the most important piece is vaccination. I said yesterday, I'm gonna say again, our strategy is vaccine-centric. Anything and everything we do is to support vaccination. Anything less than vaccination isn't gonna get us where we need to go. So we're certainly ready to look at any additional options, but right now what we wanna nail is people getting vaccinated and very bluntly showing that life is much better when you're vaccinated. You can do so much more when you're vaccinated. You have more freedom when you're vaccinated and you have a lot less you have fewer choices, fewer opportunities if you're not vaccinated. That's where we're strategically focused now. We can always make additions, but that's where we're focused now. Go ahead, Juan Manuel. Most of the uh, speakers today, they uh, said that the time to act is now, and the big elephant in the room is public schools. We could be way above 5%. Positive, positivity rate by the time they reopen in September. So are you going to mandate teachers to get the shot? And do you have a plan B 
for parents who might fear sending their children to school. Uh, Juan Manuel, uh, school will open September 13th, and it's imperative to the health and safety of our kids that they be in a place that provides them everything they need. And again, I'm talking about not just COVID as a consideration, but all other physical and mental health considerations. Uh, we have talked about this, and I'll turn to Dr. Varma and Dr. Choksi. Uh, our healthcare leaders adamantly believe in bringing back school. Now, Juan Manuel, let's, let's get the facts. We had a gold standard of health and safety measures that worked extraordinarily well even before we had any vaccinations. So yes, of course, Delta is a new ball game, but let's be clear, with no vaccinations at all, we made New York City public schools safe with really intensive health and safety measures, including everyone wearing a mask in the school, which will continue. Well, now we have 10 million vaccination doses since that time and a high level of vaccination among our school employees. We're going to be augmenting that with an intensive drive to get kids 12 years old and up vaccinated in time for school. So we have the tools to keep schools safe and we need to get our kids back to school. As to any other measures we may take, stay tuned, we're looking at all options, but I wanna put in perspective right, why right now we're in a very strong position even compared to where we were uh, when we had to start school in the context of COVID with no vaccinations available. With that, first Dr. Varma, then Dr. Choksi, if there's anything you want to add. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Juan Manuel, for the question. And, and we do understand why uh, family members, uh, parents, children themselves, you know, may be concerned. We have talked uh, repeatedly about how this new strain of COVID is something that we should be very worried about in taking action. But we should really emphasize what the mayor has been talking about today and, and really for the past several weeks is that vaccination is the key. We know how effective vaccinations are uh, both at keeping yourself healthy as well as reducing the likelihood that you will transmit infections to other people. And this particularly applies in the setting of schools. So we know that the key is really going to be to continue to promote vaccination uh, for everybody who is an adult and everybody who is 12 and above. On top of that, we will continue to use layered prevention measures. And we've talked about this a lot last year about how no one uh, measure is 100% perfect, so you layer them together. So that includes the continuing use of masks and the extensive improvements in indoor ventilation uh, that the DOE made last year and continues to work on this year. Uh, so when you add all that together and you add in the, the strength of the test and trace score on top of that, uh, we do feel confident that it's important for kids to get the full benefit of school. And as the mayor has again emphasized, health is not just about COVID. Um, schools provide enormous health benefits um, that need to be considered at all times. Thank you, Dr. Chalks, anything to add? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, last week uh, with you and with the chancellor, um, I was at uh, Lehman High School in the Bronx uh, and the chancellor and I did a, a forum with uh, some of the students there. And uh, I was struck by a young man um, who asked the question, how is it that we can best support uh, the well-being of students as they come back to school? And I very much appreciated his use of the word well-being because it reflects what we know about schools and education and their link to health, which is about much more than the absence of disease. It's about uh, not just physical health, but also mental health as well. And bringing our kids back for in-person school is fundamental to the well-being of our young people. Uh, that's our starting point, um, and we will do everything that we have to to ensure safety as we accomplish that mission. As Dr. Varma has said, uh, we have a powerful new tool in our arsenal in the vaccine. Uh, we're approaching 250,000 uh, 12 to 17 year olds who have already been vaccinated in New York City. And I wanna make sure that parents know that August 9th is the last day um, that you can get your child vaccinated for them to be fully vaccinated uh, by the time that school starts. So we're gonna be making even more of a push in the coming days and the coming weeks to get students as well as school staff vaccinated. Thank you. And I'll just add before the next question to Dave's point, I'm a parent 
if my kids were school age, 12 years old and up, I would be running right now to the nearest vaccination site to get my kids vaccinated. Not a question in my mind. The ideal is get them vaccinated now. First of all, they'll be safe now and they'll be fully vaccinated in time for school. But that said, anyone who doesn't act in the next few days, it doesn't mean therefore don't get your kid vaccinated. Remember, whenever you act, if it's the day before school, it's still going to help. The key is to go and get your child vaccinated the quickest available opportunity. And the very best time to do it is this week. And you get that $100 incentive, which is a really, really wonderful thing. With that, go ahead. The next is James Ford from PIX11. And good morning, Mr. Mayor and everyone on the call. Uh, James, James you're, in the, call. You're, in the, you're in the coveted cleanup spot today. <laughs> uh, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, just trying to get a little more clarity on the key to New York Pass. Is this just uh, an overarching term for a program where businesses will check people's vaccination status in any variety of ways? Or will the city actually issue some sort of app, some sort of paper document, some specific pass uh, regarding admission into businesses? Yeah, James, this is a strategy. And the way it comes alive is with, as, as Congressman Espayat showed us, with the vaccination card or the NYC app or the Excelsior pass. So we've got three great ways for people to prove that they are vaccinated. Uh, we need people to use one of those things if they want to go to indoor dining or entertainment or fitness facilities. And the idea is this one clear standard. You must be vaccinated to go to as a customer or to work in as an employee, any of those facilities, period. Go ahead, James. Uh, thank you. And uh, also a question for my colleague, Kalarama. Uh, what will police, this is off topic. What will policing in schools look like this year as we start transitioning control to the education department for that, please? Yeah, the, we're in a transition. Um, but what we know is we got to keep kids safe and employees safe. That's what school safety does really well. And more and more what we're seeing is school safety um, showing a really great combination of the work of our educators and school staff and the work of our safety professionals blended together in one strategy. Uh, unquestionably, I've spent a lot of time with school safety agents. I want to thank them for all they do for this city. Um, so many of them come from right in the community uh, that the school's in, they know the children of their community, they love the children of their community, they, they nurture and support them. And they also create an atmosphere of safety that uh, I can tell you as a parent, I say God bless the school safety agents, I depended on them as a parent, I think all parents do. So the transition will happen, uh, Department of Ed will ultimately uh, be uh, running that work, but the same quality the same focus on compassionate safety is going to exist this year and beyond. The next is Elizabeth Kim from Gothamist. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Hey, good morning. How you doing, Elizabeth? Good. My first question is, how does this new policy apply to children under the age of 12 who cannot be vaccinated yet? Look, I'll start and I'll turn to Dr. Choksi. We're focusing on where we can have an impact, and that's among those who can be vaccinated. And by the way, that's the vast majority of our population. Uh, we're not going to exclude those under 12. We want them to be safe. We want them to be careful. But really what we're trying to do here is focus on the folks who could be vaccinated. The whole purpose in doing this is to give people uh, the ultimate incentive to get vaccinated if they're eligible. The other thing to say before the doctor is, we do expect in the next few months, kids in the five to 11 range will become eligible. And you know, I think this is gonna be yet another reason why you'll see parents move really quickly to get kids vaccinated once that eligibility occurs. Uh, Dr. Choksi, please add. 
Uh, thank you, sir. I think you covered the high points. Um, you know, that what I would emphasize is that we do want to make as many uh, of these settings as safe as possible. And that means uh, having uh, them be uh, for people who are only fully vaccinated. That is the thrust uh, of the policy. Many of them are, are settings where, um, you know, where there won't be uh, children uh, involved. Uh, for those that may involve children, this is something that um, we have to take into consideration. Uh, as with any policy of this type, there will have to be um, some reasonable accommodations made. Uh, and so that will be part of the discussion there. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Um, so just to clarify on that, if I were to bring um, like my son or daughter who's 10 years old into a restaurant, will, will my child be allowed to come with me? Is that at the discretion of the restaurant? So again, Elizabeth, we're going to work out those details. The policy is going to be finalized over the next two weeks in consultation with uh, the business community and our healthcare leadership. We'll put out the policy and activate it uh, during that week of August 16th. Again, there will not be the inspections and enforcement and penalties until after September 13th. But this is the kind of thing we'll work through. Look, the goal, of course, is not to exclude anyone who can't be vaccinated, but we have to figure out how to do things in a safe manner. So good question. We will get you an answer. But the much more powerful piece to me, and I'm respecting the question 100 percent, is everyone in New York City 12 and older, uh, the vast majority of New Yorkers, will now have a very, very clear standard to meet. If they want to do any of these wonderful activities indoors, go get vaccinated, at least one dose. If you're not willing to uh, get vaccinated, then you're not going to be participating in either the work or the enjoyment of all these places. The next is Amanda Eisenberg from Politico. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. How are you? I'm doing good, Amanda, but hearing your name, I'm having volleyball flashbacks and uh, you are you are a keen competitor, Amanda. <laughs> we won a rematch. We think it was rigged. So, we, you know, we're willing to play you again. I'm definitely, happy to go one on one. You know, definitely I, I, not not rigged. And I'll take that rematch any day. Great. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about funding these businesses who might need to be paying for additional labor to do this carding system. Representative Espayat yesterday had suggested that there might be a funding model available to kind of give businesses, you know, some, some extra help financially to be able to deal with this. Is this something that's on the table or something you're considering? We're going to look at a variety of ways that we can help the businesses, Amanda. We want this to be a success. We want it to go smoothly. Uh, look, I don't think when you think about the fact that everything we're talking about essentially has some kind of way that people check in when you go to a restaurant, you go to a uh, you know, a gym or a fitness club, you know, just think about the different venues we're talking about, a movie theater, there's always a place where someone takes a ticket, whatever it might be. So adding uh, a simple check to make sure that someone has valid vaccination, I don't think that's going to be overly cumbersome in the final analysis. But we do want to make sure it works and works well. So we're going to look at a variety of options to support businesses in that. Go ahead, Amanda. Great, thank you so much. Um, and then my second question is off topic. Attorney General Tish James had released a report today saying that Governor Cuomo had sexually harassed uh, several women and created a hostile work environment. Um, I wanted to know what your thoughts are. I understand that this report came out during this press conference and you might not have been briefed, but I'm hoping to just get your you know, initial reaction. Look, Amanda, I obviously want to see the report I definitely have faith in the Attorney General that she and her team have conducted a thorough, objective investigation. And from what you're telling me, those are very troubling findings. But uh, I need to see the report to be able to give you uh, a deeper answer on this. We have time for two more for today. The next is Linda Baccaro from NBC. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your time. How you doing, Linda? One of the events coming. I'm well, thank you. How are you doing? All right. Excellent. Uh, one of the events coming up where people will have to show proof of vaccination is a homecoming concert that you've been talking about in New York City. And this morning we checked Ticketmaster and the VIP tickets for the Central Park show are going for just under $5,000. Wanted to get your reaction to that first. And also, 
uh, what advice would you have to people who are hoping to still get free tickets? Well, Linda, this is a people's concert, as are the ones in the other four boroughs. The vast majority of tickets free, and that was something we were very, very adamant about. Um, the VIP tickets are to pay for much of the cost. And for those who have the resources, you know, by buying those tickets, they're helping make it possible that everyone else can go for free. Uh, but there's more opportunities. Uh, we'll get the exact timing. I think it's today and tomorrow when uh, tickets are going to be made available. So urge New Yorkers, get ready for those moments and, you know, jump online and grab tickets because they're going to be absolutely amazing concerts. Go ahead, Linda. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. You good? Okay. Last question for today goes to Nolan Hicks from the New York Post. No. Hey everybody, I don't know if this is. Good morning, everybody. Is this on? Yeah, Nolan. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Mr. Mayor. How are you doing? Good. I was about to say you need more coffee, but I doubt that's the case. That's, I always try to avoid that unfortunate outcome. On the policy announcement today regarding the vaccine mandates, how will this apply to other indoor activities like shopping malls, grocery stores, pharmacies, um, things that are, are more, I, I guess, potentially presenting lower profile risk? It's a great question, Nolan. Look, we very purposely focused to begin on um, important parts of life in this city, but where people went for enjoyment uh, that were not you know, the most essential services and where we think there's a particular need because folks are in close proximity, eating, drinking, exercising, whatever it may be. Um, this is a very, very important place to make this change. Just think about what it'll mean for people's lives. Uh, once upon a time, uh, to use an analogy, very different reality, but I think it makes it vivid. Once upon a time, you know, smoking was typical in restaurants and bars. A lot of us, I happen to have asthma. A lot of other people with respiratory problems really suffered because of that. You never felt comfortable. You were always worried, was someone gonna light up a cigarette? Well, this is a much, much bigger problem. You know, a deadly disease uh, that lurks in our city that has taken so many lives. To be able to go into a restaurant, a bar, a gym, a movie theater, and know the entire environment is folks who are vaccinated, which means much less chance of transmission. It also means even if, God forbid, someone contracted the disease, they are protected against the worst outcomes. That's really night and day. So that's what we're achieving with this mandate. But we will now look at other areas as well, other types of businesses, and absolutely consider whether it makes sense to do something similar. But this was the right place to begin uh, and a place where I think we're going to have a particularly profound impact. Go ahead, Nolan. And to follow up on Amanda's question about the attorney general's investigation, I want you to react to the findings as outlined in the executive summary which are specifically, and to quote, we find that the governor sexually harassed a number of current and former New York State employees by, among other things, engaging in unwelcome and non-consensual touching, as well as making numerous offensive comments of a suggestive and sexual nature that created a hostile work environment for women. Additionally, our investigation revealed the governor sexual harassing was not limited to members of his own staff, but also extended to other state employees, including a state trooper on his protective detail and members of the public. It goes on to outline nearly a dozen instances where they say they can confirm that the governor either sexually harassed staff or engaged in retaliatory actions against people who brought allegations of sexual harassment, including describing his uh, female staff assistants as the quote, mingle mamas, end quote, and grabbing the breasts of one staffer. What should the governor do in response to these findings? Should, yeah. Nolan, you're still there? I'm still here, yeah. Yeah, no, I thought you were mid-sentence there. Um, no, no, I cut off. I think, that's, I think Mingle Mamas is enough. Yeah. I, look, having said very clearly, I've not read the report. I will be reading it, and I'll comment further when I do. I'll state the obvious. The summary you just gave uh, represents behavior that's unacceptable. Uh, unacceptable in anyone, let alone a public servant. Uh, I've been very clear about the fact that what we've seen uh, is disqualifying. Uh, I'll look at this report and have more to say, but 
Uh, it's very, very troubling and painful to hear that accounting of a powerful person treating people that way. With that, going back, everyone, to why we gathered here today, the fight against COVID. Um, look, this mandate is going to help us save lives. This mandate is going to help us bring our city back fully. And the bottom line is it's time for everyone to get vaccinated. And we're making really clear, you want the key to NYC, you want everything good about this city, all it takes is go out and get vaccinated. Just get that first dose and you're in the game. Of course, follow through, get the second dose too at the right time. But all you gotta do is walk down the street, walk in for free, get vaccinated, it takes a few minutes and you're in the game. You get to enjoy all the life in New York City. And if you don't get vaccinated, you're gonna be left out of a lot of things. And I don't say that with any joy. But I think it's what people need to hear to motivate a lot of people to take that next step for their own protection. We are doing this for your protection, your family, your community. So once again, the right thing to do, go get vaccinated. Thank you, everyone.